Hello, welcome back. Today is March 8th and we're doing uh, AI stories and space and a lot of nonsense today. Today's Friday. Now this one, unfortunately, has already been walked back. <laughs> yeah. This was a trial balloon, I feel. <laughs> but God, was it fun while we thought this was going to be the dark future. Wendy's is introducing Uber-style surge pricing. This is no doubt the the idea of hatched by some PR agency that was like, this is a good idea. Like, we, we just need to be in the news. It doesn't matter that this is going to be, like, people are going to be mad. We're going we're gonna to rage bait people with this because there's no such thing as bad PR. And thus was born. We're going to have variable pricing. Well, it's notable that it's Wendy's, too, because Wendy's also was the first person to get on that, like, mean social media bandwagon. So it probably was absolutely just a PR stunt. Now, we do know that, so this was supposed to be the culmination of the drive through AI, which we know that everybody's doing, and the digital signage that can be updated immediately, which everybody is also doing. And so Wendy said, hey, why don't we just take this to the worst possible place? <laughs> and so if it's a busy lunchtime, those prices might actually just inch up while you're sitting there waiting to get your burger. Oh, man, the Frosties are 10 cents off. I've got to stop and have a Frosty. I was about to say, have you ever dug out change in your car to like pay for something at a fast food thing? But it's like, what if it just keeps going up and you can't find enough change? I just recently realized that uh, all fast foods around the country price everything differently based on the location. Yeah, yeah I've heard that. Which is, this is just an extreme version of that. But they're not going to do it. They've walked it back for about six months, you think? Yeah, probably not even. We'll probably do a story about this in like two months. A couple of times when I've been picking up Mom's Rally Burger... What used to be like the obvious AI voice has switched a couple of times, not always, to a very, very thick Indian accent. <laughs> oh. That's got to suck when you're realizing that the people are paying amounts that would be life changing for you just for like the softball team to have a snack today. Yeah. <laughs> And the other big trend this week has been OpenAI agreeing to buy everybody's data. Tumblr and WordPress are going to sell users' data to train AI tools. Turns out real curated data, there's nothing better for training AI. And we're just like microplastics in the environment, we're about to introduce all kinds of AI-generated content to pollute all the regular content, which will make all of the training data very bad. Tumblr is an unhinged place. I, I sort of love it, but it's kind of like an opposite day world of 4chan. And so you got to kind of like sift through it a little bit. The number of people that have mental problems on the internet is already going to pollute the training data. Yeah. You can opt out on Tumblr for now. And I don't know how much that actually counts. But if you're following along in the one tab, I have to resort this. I'm sorry. Oh. This was a bad sort because we had another story that just switched the names in the headline. Match Group inks a deal with OpenAI. It says press release written by ChatGPT. This is a TechCrunch article. So they're going to buy all their, also written their by user it. data, too. Don't worry. It's been anonymized. Dot, dot, dot. They own most of the dating sites, right? Yeah. It's not just Match.com. They own a bunch of them. So all those pictures, when you put a picture on the dating site, guess what? You <laughs> now are part of the OpenAI training data. Yay. Chat GPT, write me a dating profile. I bet it would be good at that. Especially after it gets that data. Uh, once it gets the data, yeah. Make okay. me sound funnier than I actually am. But it's going to be like, I, yeah, I'm a six foot five power lifter, venture capitalist. And then it shows the picture. It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Are you saying I don't match that profile? And uh, this, I remember this exact same story. Remember that? Yeah. And they've just kind of refreshed it. But this is a recent story, so I don't know what happened here. But the facts all seem about the same. The Reuters headline is OpenAI says the New York Times quote-unquote hacked ChatGPT to build a copyright lawsuit. The thing that changed since the last time we reported this is that OpenAI thinks they've been able to piece together exactly what happened and how they did that. And that the New York Times hired somebody to do it. Yeah. Like they didn't just say, well, let's sit down here and see what's going on. They hired some third party to try to prove it. So... It'll be interesting to see how this court case goes. I, it's, I think the deck is not stacked in the New York Times' favor here at all. Well, they claim that... What is hacking, right? New York Times says, no, we just used the prompt. That's all we did. But ChatGPT says that's against the terms of service, and I think it is, technically. Yeah. Well, and the, the thing that issue at issue here is, can you get the software to produce substantially the same as a copyrighted work? And I think that's in question now. 
I think it paraphrased for sure. Yeah. But they say it was almost verbatim. How much is that? And does it meet the, will it meet the standards of plagiarism? No. Well, it's maybe. a good, good standard to compare it against. But OpenAI is still the powerhouse. They've got the best stuff. They're the mo- they got all the money. They got Microsoft. And they're planning for big things. The uh, blog post from uh, OpenAI is planning for AGI and beyond. AGI is uh, the artificial general intelligence, or general artificial intelligence is how you should read that. And that means that you have an AI that could actually play a game of rock, paper, scissors with you and understand why you're winning without being pre-programmed to do that. It would realize something that... It's like, oh, wait a minute. I'm experiencing the passage of time differently than you are. That's why you're always winning. But the way language models work is not that. And it probably never will be. There would have to be some new yes. form of artificial intelligence. So, And Sam Sam Altman has given some talks lately. And if you connect the dots on that, it seems like that's something OpenAI is working on. They don't really want to talk a lot about. Oh, well, they kept <laughs> emphasizing, like, that we're a nonprofit. And, like, we have safeguards in place. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm sure. Just like the that coup that happened. But if you remember, before the coup, he did a talk and made some really veiled comments. Yeah. And some people thought that might have something to do with the board being like, hang on here, Sam. <laughs> what, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Uh, and very recently, I believe it is a direct quote from him. He said, you know, if the stars align, we could see general artificial intelligence in seven months, which is crazy. I hope I'm dead by then. You're going to be dead in seven months. <laughs> I got to get some hiking in before, but now, now the context of that is important because he was, he was saying that, you know, <laughs> we, we thought crack. this part of, of large language models was going to take us years and we did it in months. And we thought this part of large language models was going to take 10 years and we did it in like a year. And so in the context of that is he's saying that we did all this stuff super quickly using the tools that we developed that we thought was going to take forever. And so maybe that also means that AGI is a lot closer than we thought too. I got another bad sort here. You can tell that I sorted the last set of stories just as the team's call was about to start. Yep. <laughs> but uh, this, not just the New York Times now, a lot of people are screaming the same thing when it comes to OpenAI. The Intercept Raw Story and Alternet sue OpenAI and Microsoft. They're saying, wait a minute, you have removed important information about our copyrights from the training data. So when you ask it questions about our stuff, it doesn't say copyright, raw story, or alternate, or intercept. But in some cases, it does reproduce information that was only available from those articles. So it seems like they maliciously removed the attributions, but kept the information. If it's purely factual, though, if you remember that The Intercept reported a fact and you say this is a fact, that is, you're not required to cite it. I got to think that all the news, little news companies that just do Wall Street Journal stories because they know it's paywall and you'll come <laughs> to their place, they got to be sweating bullets, right? <laughs> like, oh, please don't legislate against this. And finally, we hinted to the, this earlier. But those the, attribute, though, like they still say this is from the Associated Press or Washington Post. That's true. They usually do that. If you if you add attribution, then that would be fine. But then those individuals could come after you and be like, this is my work and I don't want you to have it. <laughs> but yes, our final lawsuit for these poor people. God, the lawyers are just raking in the hours at this point, right? Elon Musk is suing OpenAI and Sam Altman over their betrayal of nonprofit AI mission. As always, like people love to drop the the shock bomb. It's like, did you know that Elon Musk was an early investor in OpenAI? That was when OpenAI was fully open source for the good of humanity and blah blah blah. And so Elon Musk is finally saying, "All right, well, you know, enough people have told me that I have a case. I'm gonna just I'm gonna <laughs> the worst just... person you know made a good point." Yeah. Now he only gave them like fifty million, but. You could argue that that $50 million probably went a long way mm-hmm. to the early success of OpenAI. And they certainly did not keep up the spirit of what he invested in. And uh, once again, the Microsoft is branching out. They're trying to get more sources of data, but they're also not putting all their eggs in one basket when it comes to the models. Microsoft announces deal with Mistral, expanding their AI portfolio. You think Altman is like, what's going on, bro? Yeah, I wondered. I wondered about that. Maybe that's why they did that press release this week. They're trying to look more enticing and be like, don't, don't stray, baby. I'll be sexier. I'll get to AI first. 
Well, somebody else had to do a press release this week, and it was an uncomfortable one because there is no defending what happened here. Google CEO calls AI tools controversial responses completely unacceptable. But you look at the responses and it's like, mm, this seems like an AI that is torturing itself to not say things directly. Seems like you used a bunch of extra stuff to try to hide reality and it backfired on you. <laughs> Congratulations. And this man has decided that AI is the future of everything and that humanity will not be necessary at all. Jensen, the, the NVIDIA Jensen, Jensen Huang, says the kids shouldn't learn to code. They should leave it up to AI. Now this is... Let's translate this to kids shouldn't learn how to write. Well, the, I, all of these headlines, like, this is all just clickbait. Because this isn't what he really... For what he was talking about, the concept here was not kids shouldn't learn to think. It was just more kids shouldn't be hung up on the syntax of stuff. English is imprecise. English is not a good programming language because it is so imprecise and so open to interpretation in a way that a programming language is not. But what he was saying is, yes, there will always be a spot for you if you learn to think and problem solve and all this other kind of stuff, but you don't, you don't need to get hung up on language because that's going to change so rapidly it doesn't matter. I don't think he understands the reality yeah. of uh, like a, you know, a kid who grows up poor and doesn't have access to any of this stuff. I don't think they have the opportunities that his kids would in terms of just be smart. <laughs> That's not enough. You also have to be noticed. Yeah, you have to be noticed. Like getting your uh, resume through all of his AI <laughs> gauntlet to try to get a job to make enough money to get into that position. I love those stories about people that try to go to work for Google and Google's erected that delicious moat for... And it's like, I invented this open source library that Google uses on millions of machines and they wouldn't hire me because I couldn't get through the interview process. It's like... <laughs> well, that's not just Google anymore. I think that's everywhere where it's like, well, I have to tailor... Tailor my resume not for the person who will read it, but rather for the AI that will look at it. Yeah, you might have invented that. But this H-1B from India can <laughs> use it, and we don't have to pay them anything. I was reading a blog post from somebody that was just laid off from Amazon because they wouldn't return to work. And it was a, it was a situation where they literally, it's like, when I, when I was hired at Amazon eight years ago, I was work from home. And I led the team, and we did all this stuff, and I figured that I've made... Amazon at least a hundred million dollars from my work on this. And so it's obviously somebody who's very high functioning. And then it was like, I got caught up in the uh, post pandemic return, you know, return to the office stuff. And he's like, I have never worked at the office, not for almost a decade. So I don't know, I guess I'm just not going to work for Amazon anymore. In fact, a lot of humans will not work for Amazon in the future. I think fewer and fewer as time goes by until the number becomes zero. <laughs> Bezos and NVIDIA join the open AI in funding humanoid robot startup because we need those to run the warehouse. And deliver. And do manufacturing. Mm -hmm. You know, the factory can get a lot more compact when you don't have to worry about human safety. It's like somebody opens the door to the factory and all the machinery shuts down. But then when you close the door and the machinery makes sure there's no human beings inside the building... Wow, that completely changes the equation, doesn't it? And the equation has changed in terms of headlines. We went from AI will not take jobs to let's brag about exactly how many jobs we can get rid of thanks to AI. Bankers will sue three quarters of the workday transformed by AI. C, I think. They will not sue the workday. So I would C. like to sue the workday. C, the workday, yeah. So they're saying that, now these are bankers in the offices, not the tellers, they estimated the tellers would get, what, 60% less? Yeah. And if we got central bank digital currencies, <laughs> forget it. Don't have to handle any cash anymore, right? We all know that Amazon has begun showing us product photos that are certainly not real. They are AI generated, and as Krista's favorite story, gotta stick around to the well. end, all kinds of advertising is lying to us, including our food. Ghost kitchens are advertising AI-generated food on DoorDash and GitHub. Or Grubhub. GitHub. Grubhub. <laughs> I got GitHub on the brain. <laughs> so. <clears throat> oh. Sign up for free to access man, this post. I wanted to look at the examples. Man, this is worse than the Wonka experience photos. Ugh. But uh, these aren't even the worst examples. They had some great ones in here where, like, Parts of the table would merge into a cutting board. <laughs> the fork had too many tongs, plus the fork, like <coughs> things behind the fork just disappeared. 
But at a glance, if you're just ordering online, you'd and be you're like, looking at a tiny phone screen, yeah. The other thing that 404 did here is they ordered some of these food items and showed the actual photo <sighs> of a Philly cheesesteak that they got, and it did not look nearly as appetizing. McDonald's has been doing that for years, but they had to actually like take the photos and <laughs> manipulate them. Now you just or use it to use a varnish on the burger. Yeah. That's a whole set dressing thing. Have you ever watched the videos where, like, you'll see a commercial where the burger's parts, like, fall together in slow motion, and they show you how much work goes into trying to film that? <laughs> Those are fascinating. And uh, AI-generated content is, of course, ruining the web and making ev- all of our search results useless, and some people are still trying to fight, but I think it's a losing battle. AI-generated articles prompt Wikipedia to downgrade CNET's reliability rating. So CNET has uh, an account called something about money, financial, and uh, it's all AI-generated purely, and it's garbage, and they point out why it is. And moving on to our one actual robot story this week. This guy we have seen before. Now, this guy was working, not this specific one, but maybe was working in the New York subway system. And How got, are, he kind of got his shit kicked in pretty quick, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Per they, my memory. They, they kicked him down a flight of stairs. Yeah. Was that in New York? There was yeah. the one in the mall that ended up in the the pool. Remember yeah, that? they just, people hate him. That was this guy. And uh, so this he's got a new job, but it'll be slightly different. Texas's San Antonio airport will get a 420 pound autonomous security robot. It's the same one. It's going to wander around the airport. Well, they say it's not going to be a surveillance bot. This guy is going to, you know how you have, uh, like in a movie theater, you get the emergency doors. And when you hit them, the alarm goes off and everything. He's going to be the first responder to the security door to see what's going on. He's going to end up in a fountain. I can only hope. Or what if he just wanders onto a plane? Like something about the pathing is wrong. I can't wait to do the story where he gets sucked up into a jet engine. Or, oh. or he gets onto the luggage conveyor. <laughs> it's just, I'd watch that Pixar That'd movie. Be a great video. And uh, oh, F's in the chat. Um, we're so sad. Because last week we reported that this guy touched down, but it was premature to celebrate, it seems. Intuitive Machines, Odysseus Moon Lander tipped over on touchdown. Oh. Don't worry, it's solar panels are still able to catch rays. It's able to use its instrumentation. It's probably okay that it's on its side. Interestingly, it seems that it was never designed to last very long because of the cold moon night but why wouldn't i mean we can build robots that can withstand that why spend so much money on something that's going to last like 10 days because it would weigh a lot more and that's hard to get up there because we're still waiting on musk have we gained enough and if you're wondering how we will get out of this horrible spiral that we're in as a, a people as a planet maybe the answer is in the stars and maybe we found the obvious indicator that life is out there. The mathematically perfect exoplanet system, a great place to search for alien technology. So this is a, a an entire solar system that appears to have planets that are uh, have orbits that are perfect multiples of one another. Now we've seen that in our own solar system with some of the moons of Jupiter, according to the article. But this is the entire solar system, which seems <laughs> like it seems like the odds would be astronomical. And yet, there are a lot of places in space. If there's an alien race out there that has the kind of technology to rearrange planets, <laughs> we're done. Yeah. They are not going to tolerate us. Do you think that they're that alien, like, those people are also the kind of people who have very specific requirements for their volume on their television <laughs> as well? They're like, like, it doesn't really matter that they changed the, the orbits on the planets, but they're like, I just feel better if there are multiples of each other. <laughs> it's like... It's like the you know their version of Xi Jinping. It's like no, I just want it to be that way. And That's like, not important. I just want it that way. Okay, I guess we'll build a bunch of dams and reroute all the water in the country if that's what you want. All right, we'll do it. Was it the uh, the, the movie with uh, Doctor Manhattan um, when he when he is just done with people and he just turns his hand slightly and they explode and the noise that it makes? 
I get that's the feeling that, that like that's what I visualize in my head. It's like some alien race comes and they're just they're just done with us. Like the first time they meet with a politician that has duplicitous intent, it's just that's what I see in my mind. Just that like, they're just gone. Commander, if we change their orbit, it's going to kill every living person on the planet. And it's like it needs to be an odd number. So go ahead and do that. It's just chaos. All these orbits are so different. And uh, here, you know, on the nonsense section, I like to point out all the weird stuff that cops do. It seems that a lot of people are souring on law enforcement as we go into the the dark future. And how do you recruit? Peoria's police chief apologizes for recruitment ad pattern after a violent video game. Wow. (laughs) That's not even subtle. Call of Duty. And they use the font. They did. That is... That's not just the font. That's the logo because it's got the of that's tinier between it. Yeah. They didn't just type it out. My favorite thing here is like they didn't AI generate this or anything. These guys were excited to be in their own advertisement. So it's like gravy seals. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> Are we going to play that tonight? What's the, what's the name of that? Ready or not? I don't know. It's not Call of Duty. It's not Call of Duty, but it's the same kind of thing. I did for benchmarking. I did buy one of those games that was like $70. And it is it is amazing how many microtransactions they have patched into that Call of Duty game. It is incredible. I can't even keep up with it anymore. I, I don't uh-huh. understand. Like, it's just so... Uh, it's not... Like, that's, how, that's how I feel playing, like, uh, Fortnite, where it's just so aggressively, constantly, like, you've done a challenge today. Go get your reward. Go 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 to the store. Look at this. And it's like, why, just leave me alone. Why are you playing Fortnite? I tried Fortnite, like, last year because some friends wanted to play it. They're like, let's see if it's worth the hype. It was good. Not worth friends the hype. would not. That's like friends trying to give you cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Ready or not is fun, and Battle Bit was actually genuinely fun. Uh, but yeah, that the Call of Duty games just. The thing that's fun about Ready or Not is it's not other people shooting at me, and I can actually win. <laughs> it's bots, yeah. <laughs> and this man has won, despite his performance being way worse than mine in online shooters. <laughs> Somehow he was still rewarded. Norfolk Southern CEO, that's the guy in charge of all the train wrecks that we've reported on, saw a 37% raise despite East Palestine derailment and a bunch of others. So he basically poisoned a town. (laughs) It goes, it goes, guillotine! (laughs) Now, in his defense, I did look up the statistics and we derail about two or three trains a day in this country. So you're saying he deserves a raise even less. I mean, he probably should have, you know, like the toxic chemicals add a wild card in there. Can we maybe work on improving our... No. We can't have better power transmission and we can't have better train tracks. That would be devastating to the line going up. What can we just... I can't say what we should do. You cannot say that. No. This this is also... This is kind of a non-story, but just not for the people involved. Well, isn't she the one that was uh, given the HJ in the, yeah. the movie theater? Yeah. So this family's got a bit of a, yeah. a, a, a kink here. <laughs> Lauren Bobert's son is in the news for a thing. And, and he's underage, and she's underage, oh. and there might be a thing, and there's... I don't know. This they is, were breaking into cars. Yeah. I think there's a probably a drug habit here, right? Yeah. There's a quote at the at, she says, uh, "Breaks my heart to see my child struggling and in this situation." So I'm thinking addiction is probably. Yeah. But you know what? Even if it's not addiction, addiction is a reasonable where it's just like, "Oh, look, they're struggling and they're trying to get better." Okay, we'll give them a pass. No. And if you can't keep your household <laughs> in check, don't tell me. Don't be making laws. <laughs> You can't even keep it in your pants through a movie. Exactly. <laughs> well, it was the guy. So oh, well. she, her pants were on. Her, yeah, but <laughs> it's the thought that counts. It's an idiot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, probably too easy for a title this week if we just like let them eat flakes. Oh. But it would well, be a, that's a great. That's great. Yeah. We're going to that. CEO faces backlash for saying people should eat cereal for dinner to save money. Cereal is not cheap. And a lot of people. It's of, not. Lot of, a lot of cases, cereal is more expensive than my uh, rice and bean, my gourmet rice and beans. Those of us who grew up on bag cereal can attest to that box cereal. Kellogg's, we did not have Kellogg's in my house very often. My, my lunch today was rice and beans and chickpeas. And I had like the the everything bagel seasoning. And uh, it was all in like a spicy Indian gravy. Oh, it was so good. No, you should be eating cereal because the CEO said so. It was That was like 80 cents of food. So yeah, uh, they show. They, I like that they picked a picture of Special K red berries as well. 
That's your nickname. Yeah. Yeah. That literally, that is, I guarantee you, an order of magnitude more expensive than my rice and beans lunch. Well, also, strawberries. It's, it's empty carbs and sugar. Yeah. So probably not the best thing to be having. For not dinner. as filling as beans. You're gonna be. You're gonna go to bed hungry if you're eating that. Good, then you can eat more cereal and line go up. <laughs> Get up in the middle of the night, have some cereal, go back to sleep. <laughs> Talk to your doctor when you have diabetes. It's like, well, the Kellogg CEO told me I needed to eat cereal for dinner. I'm actually a little bit surprised we're not already seeing, you know, here's your here's your uh, your chicken that is uh, 35% cricket. And it just has that on the package. It's like, no, this is, this is cheap. It looks and feels and tastes just like chicken but it is 35 percent cricket but it's also 50 percent cheaper have you seen kfc's new offering cheetza <laughs> they took some chicken strips put them in a box put some mozzarella and pepperoni on it cheetza isn't that already a thing chicken parmesan that's just chicken parmesan oh that's a oh. you're right about that I don't know if they put the sauce on it. They probably do. I haven't had it. I only saw a report of the week's video on it. <laughs> and this is from, uh, is this New Zealand or Australia? I can never remember which is which. But, oh, New South Wales. That's New Zealand, right? There, there's only, like, this is one of the articles where I was just like, I don't know what these words mean. It is crazy, these headlines. But also, this is apparently a massive story over there. And I was having trouble, like, putting the pieces together. But the headline is about... How she tried to just brush off any questioning that was given to her over this. The headline here is Karen Webb brushes off leadership concerns and aftermath of Jesse Barrett, Luke Davies' alleged murders. But the way she did it, which they left out of the headline here, which this must be a paywall alternative, is that she quoted Taylor Swift by saying, haters gonna hate. Mm. So they were like, this I think is the a- lyric is hate, 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 right? Did she even get it wrong? She probably got it wrong. They're saying that, so these two dudes were murdered. A cop did it. I'm, I think, I'm, as much as I can put together, a cop murdered these two dudes. You're going to have to go listen to a podcast to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. And he did it because he was doing plain clothes, or maybe not even plain clothes security at some event. And she's been media silent. She won't talk about it. And they're like, hey, people are criticizing this. Why aren't you doing something? And her response was... Taylor Swift said haters going to hate. And in Seattle, people, the lawlessness has gotten to the point where people are just like going back to basics. They're like, you know what? I like this park. It's my home now. (laughs) Homeless man who dug up a Seattle park with an excavator has now built a cabin there where he excavated (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> living the american dream it is uh the the article refers to it as a sprawling estate you should go watch the youtube video i mean it's, it doesn't look terrible he's added uh diesel generators and large propane tanks which a lot of people are pointing out maybe a bit of a danger maybe not up to code <laughs> he got arrested when he tried to do it with the excavator got a pr bond and went back out with hand tools and finished it up I'll watch that YouTube channel. They, they said they also spent a bunch of money repairing what he did with the excavator, but he, they weren't able to undo it all. And he just was like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. just get right back in there. Well, he's out there logging. Yeah. And digging under the, like digging tunnels to put more stuff in. He, some people claim that he has this fantasy that he's going to mine for gold under the park. Oh. Do they have gold in that area? I don't think so, but I'm not sure. You know, I trust that guy. I think he knows what he's talking about. Well, these people did some different mining. They were mining the human placenta. (laughs) And guess what they found? Microplastics. Mm. Uh, Science Alert said, we found microplastics everywhere. We uh, we reported, I think last week, or maybe maybe it got cut, microplastics were found in sediment that they should not have been found in. Sediment that was otherwise undisturbed since the 1700s. The microplastics were able to infiltrate into the settlement there. So these guys were like, hey, uh, we'd like to test and see if possibly there's microplastics in placentas. So if you could send us some. And it was like, yeah, let me just mail you some placentas. Every single one of them teeming with microplastics. And also, over time, that amount is increasing. So this guy was talking about like, microplastics might not be killing us now, but it's a, it's a dosage thing, right? <laughs> like one aspirin won't kill you. 
Well, what happens when we get the equivalent of 20 aspirins in our placentas? Are we going to plot this like it was the uh, lead contamination rate? And it's like, oh, a small background amount of lead is no problem. And then you, you start looking at the in- increasing <laughs> oh, no. amount of lead and then some other lines going up. And it's like, oh. oh. All right, see, so here's the milestone where they stopped being able to do algebra. <laughs> <laughs> We seem to have crossed that. (laughs) Uh, And, uh, you know, maybe you want to go a little more all natural with your food and perhaps your medicine as well. Uh, Four states set to consider making female disorder a medical marijuana qualifying condition. Like, I don't, we just, we've we've landed squarely in the nonsense section at this point. We've been there for a few minutes. (laughs) So apparently, if you're uh, a girl who's a little bit high strung, uh, they say that this almost always accompanies autism and depression and stuff like that. There's a lot to be stressed about in the modern world. I get it. So you're too stressed to let it go. Maybe a little weed will help you relax on out. If you can get uh, Viagra over the counter. (laughs) I mean... I like this website is Marijuana Moment as well. What a logo. <laughs> There's a website for everything these days. Oh, it's a local interest story. But I didn't find it local. <laughs> this was in the normal place where I usually find nonsense stories. <laughs> that is, this is nonsensical. And it has to do with the, you know, horrible, I don't know why. Do you think they use the Taylor machines? I don't know. But the ice cream machines, you would think Dairy Queen would have the best one, right? Maybe don't, maybe don't check out Dairy Queen for their ice cream. Dairy Queen employees claim their manager forced them to eat ice cream mixed with cleaning solution. So read this. There's, there's some interesting stuff in this story. I actually dug into this a little bit, and I found that some comments that suggested a, an alternative explanation. But what seems to have happened is these employees were on shift when they were to clean the ice cream machine. And they cleaned it, but they didn't clean out the chemicals properly. And so the manager had them all come back and said, no, you're going to you're going to sample some of the ice cream that you served customers or you were about to serve customers because it'll make them sick and terrible. And so like everybody freaked out and he's like, you have to eat this chocolate ice cream so that you never make this mistake again. Seems to be like, you know, some grandpa, you know, oh, I caught you smoking. You're going to smoke all these cigars, yeah. in the, you know, kind of a thing. Wash your mouth out with soap because you swore. Like. Yeah. Some of them went to the hospital and all kinds of stuff like that. I saw a comment that said that it was not actually cleaning solution, but some other kind of thing that that guy added after he figured out what they, and he was just trying to teach them a lesson. Oh, but so I, he was spiking it? Yeah. That but, makes it worse. Yeah. That's so much worse. <laughs> but it was not, uh, but no, not, not spiking with cleaning solution, but spiking it with something that would make it taste weird just to freak them out, to be like, you have to do your job better. Like, I can't watch every little thing that you do, but good Lord. That's a poor way to handle that. You're yeah. saying it's something non-toxic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's still but it's still terrible, point. though, because yeah. you're still yeah. gaslighting them into yeah. thinking. It's not a, not a great way to handle that at all. But it's totally, like, I could see, like, my grandfather doing something like that. It's like, you did this so wrong, you are going to now suffer. (laughs) You will never do this wrong again. Well, doing that to, you know, a relative who's very young, and, like, in a small way like that is one thing. But then telling people that you're feeding them basically poison ice cream, (laughs) and it's, like, your employees, that's a little bit But also, how, how pissed off do you have to be to think, like, your employees don't really like your food you're in the food service industry like this is how seriously you have to take this and you're not taking it this seriously like i get his frustration i mean we've all had fast food recently right yeah it's a disaster yeah they are doing everything wrong so i understand how difficult that management position would be but feeding people poison yeah. simulated or not probably not the answer also sometimes like if you're just really bored whenever you get ice out of the machine look at the ice really carefully because sometimes there's mold and chips of black stuff in the ice from the ice machine because that's a common thing from just the ice mm, you know what the solution to that is carry no a, using yeah. ice. carry a jug <laughs> that comes out of the machine cold you don't need the ice i am a, yeah yeah I'm, I'm now a big believer in just coffee tea and and water you're doing the the 1700s solution yeah just boil it all <laughs> well over at mcdonald's it seems like they're going weirder and weirder. You ever see, like, they'll release, it's like, oh, it's certain celebrities' official meal at McDonald's. I never know who they are. Like, I'm so out of touch. I also don't know what this is. McDonald's announces anime dining experiences in West Hollywood. Do I get to, can I carry my katana into the dining room is my question. This is an amazing way to bring back the McRib. So, apparently in some anime, manga, something, in the past, they had Wick Donald's. 
<laughs> which was just the M upside down. And McDonald's is now embracing that and bringing the experience. They're going to do some kind of like pop-up restaurant. You're telling me Nintendo <laughs> needs to follow from this, where they're like just okay with it, and then they just go all in. If we had a Jamie, I would be asking Jamie to get the ad agency that came up with this on the phone, because I want to do a McDowell's, and we need to see if we can get Eddie Murphy to do McDowell's. I have to say, the image on this article where it's like anime-style McDonald's does kind of make me want to eat McDonald's. Like I'm thinking <laughs> it sounds good. Wow. The McDonald's went to the trouble of creating this website. So they and they animated it, yeah. yeah. Oh, they've got characters? Where's who's Grimace? These guys look way hotter than the, the, the people, U.S. equivalent. The people that put this website together, insanely talented. And that wasn't cheap. No. no. So they're really expecting some kind of return here. I, I, I guess the youth. Got to get the youth. But the problem with that food is as much as it might be fun and you love the anime and everything, that's uh, what they call ultra-processed food. Mm. Ultra-processed so foods linked to heart disease, diabetes, mental disorders, or an early death, a study finds. <sighs> I'm going to get some McDonald's right after this. Turns out, turns out the pink slime, not good for you. Your goal of being dead in seven months. <laughs> yeah, I got to get on it. <laughs> sped along with some of that. So yeah, Is they, this surprising to anybody? I mean, Well, yeah, I think so, because a lot of people do eat nothing but that. Yeah, I'm so, just shocked that some people eat fast food for almost every meal still. Or yeah, people use what really blows my mind because not only is it not good for you, but it's also ex- extremely expensive as people who use like Grubhub every day. Yeah. Oh I don't God. understand that. Like, how are you alive and financially solvent? Yeah. And this was a close runner up to be the last story of the week. <laughs> because There's been some good ones this what week. What a hilarious, what a, what a time. for He'll never reach this peak in his life ever again. His whole life is just going to be talking to the other guys in the enclosure about what happened last week. Guinea pig to become father to 400 after breaking into a female enclosure. I feel like I've seen a similar story to this before. I think, won't future geneticists be able to identify this event? And it's like, oh, all modern people are descended from Genghis Khan. Oh. Kind of like that. He should, Guinea Khan should be his name. <gasps> but they've instead chose Randy, which... Uh, uh, fair. They're not sure how he got into the female enclosure, but he was there for, they think, about a week. And they noticed that he was much skinnier than when he went in. Oh. <laughs> he's been exerting himself. Uh, and speaking of animal lovemaking, can you believe that up until this point, humanity as a collective has never managed to see whales having sex? You probably, someone probably has. They just didn't, they just didn't, reg- or they just didn't <laughs> register what they were looking at. They filmed it and they were like, this is for the private collection. <laughs> but now we have seen it, but there's a twist. The uh, Guardian has the headline and, uh, and some pictures and uh, both whales were male. Isn't that true of dolphins as well? Yeah. Dolphins will do that. Apparently the higher you get in terms of evolutionary progress with the animals, you get the, the homosexuality. Now, it could be there could be a sadness here because... The uh, the bottom whale was crusted over with parasites and weak and may have just been unable to stop this from happening. Oh. We're not sure. Again, really kind of calling in the, the dolphin parallel. Yeah. Now they point out, um, we're paywall, but you should read this for the specific language because I was really trying to get my head around it. They, I can't figure out like what, where it was going. Like what parts on a whale... Oh, yeah. Uh. Apparently they have a genital slit. <laughs> Maybe that's it? Or Someone else? who knows more about... <laughs> but who knows more about it? It's never been seen. It's his brand new behavior. There might be some weirdo in the comments who's like, actually, I was the guy. <laughs> I, we've got the guy to ask right here. <laughs> <laughs> he, they, CNN, why, let us know. Why was he... Approaching a whale when he shouldn't have been? Yeah, it could explain it. Brazil's former president, Jair, Jair? Bolsonaro, 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 I think, I don't know. Denies harassing a whale. But there's a video. There's a video where he was got was it he uncomfortably it close to a whale. And in Brazil, it's like, no, you got to leave, leave the whales alone. He saw it and he was like, oh, that whale's covered in parasites. <laughs> there might be an opportunity here. <laughs> That's dark. Uh, he's a... Uh, He's a big target, though, for the mainstream media because he's very against them. <laughs> the picture of the whale. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> CNN's down there. They got him down. Oh, 
<laughs> you just saw that like, oh, he's covered in parasites. He's a big target. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, moving from uh, big fish, actually, I know they're not fish, but they, they swim with fish, to a small one. One of the world's smallest fish found to make a sound as loud as a gunshot. That little guy, has, he's only as, as long as your thumbnail is wide, but he can make a loud noise. And only the males. Does it like, attract females? They, they're not sure why he's doing it. Either they think it's either that or warning away predators. That would scare me. If I was another fish. Especially in water, because the way sound carries in water. Yeah. Like, what the heck was that? That wasn't that little thing. There's no way. He's got a rib and like a water, or the air bladder inside of his body, and he's able to like pull it back, like a striker in a gun. Oh. Like prime it back and then bang it. Imagine taking a, a Boy Scout troop of those fish on any kind of trip. You're in the <laughs> bus and you can just hear... Pow, 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 pow. They're just making noise. Like, Shut up. There's a guy with a net up there. <laughs> and uh, I've never seen Peppa Pig outside of some memes. No, I've never watched Never actually it. watched it, but apparently she's got a bad attitude. Parents accused of the beloved TV show Peppa Pig of teaching children rudeness. Engagement challenge. You're going to have to tell us if that makes sense. Some examples they give in the article is apparently because Peppa's a pig. Her dad is also a pig and he's kind of fat. And she's always busting his balls. <laughs> <laughs> And she calls some people stupid <laughs> and uh, says that she's bored, mm. which, I mean, a four-year-old, mm. they do all those things. But the, the moms, the Karens in the article are like, my child should be only presented a perfect thing to emulate. <laughs> well, then don't show your kid Peppa Pig. Don't what? use this as a babysitter. Yeah. Also, sometimes isn't some of that culturally, like, does it, don't German people have a reputation for being direct and almost to the point of that's being of interpreted rudeness, of, yes. of rudeness? Peppa's British, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, we don't know. Are British people rude? I don't know enough. Engagement challenge? I think they're, the accent would cover it up for me because I'd be like, oh, they sound so posh. <laughs> I think they're like passive aggressively. Mm. I don't know if Pep is. Though. What about British children, though? Oh, How long does it take to learn that? Show. <laughs> what an amazingly dry and sarcastic attitude you have. <laughs> this is amazing. And uh, these poor girls right here in our backyard have unfortunately been too successful <laughs> as females. Quote unquote, because they're girls. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Northern Kentucky youth basketball team barred from tournament. They did really well. It's a small school system. You know, they wanted to play in the basketball tournament. They did really well. Exceptionally well. And so why? Why would they be banned? The official response was, these girls are really good. <laughs> We're afraid that the boys might get frustrated and attack them. Mm. So we can't let them compete. Disappointing. That, that well, reminds this makes me, me want to murder everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of those uh, hijab laws. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, if I look at you and you're so beautiful, I can't be responsible <laughs> for what happens. <laughs> what a good lesson for both the girls and the boys <laughs> yeah. in, this le- in this scenario. <laughs> Listen, son, if a woman outperforms you ever, just hit her <laughs> until society makes her stop. <laughs> Explains a lot. And this might explain why our youth in general has just gone awry. And it's because their entire world is awful. They see these headlines every day. They get treated like objects. And they think they're going to have a little bit of fun. And then... Willy Wonka immersive event leaves kids in tears. Quote, unquote, it looks like a meth lab. If you look at no other story this week, I know there's like a lot of important actual tech stories, but just look at this one because that's all that matters. They, they advertise this with AI-generated images. So here's what we were promised. Yeah, like I mean, that Candy looks, Wonderland. That looks magical, right? Yeah, very colorful. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the image from the event. It's so poorly done. It's like a gray warehouse, and then they bought some Party City decorations. <laughs> they they hired actors and gave them AI generated scripts, and nothing at all came together. My my favorite part is there's a a character they call the unknown. <laughs> And it's literally just a guy in a black robe and a silver mask who hides behind a mirror. And the kids come to, like, see it. And, like, the person's talking about the unknowns, the chocolatier who lives in the walls to come get you. And then the person comes out from behind the mirror and all the kids scream. This actress spoke out and was just like, (laughs) I usually don't, like, I'm not on social media. Like, 
please stop teasing me. But yeah. also, I get it. It is kind of funny. Yeah, the, the character that she, like, she was supposed to play a sad Oompa Loompa. Like, that was in the script. But also, they, they didn't give her enough jelly beans. Yeah, each kid got one jelly bean and a, <laughs> a thing of limeade from the gas station. So the marketing was wildly successful. The marketing was like a 10 out of 10. Yeah, this is not that. real. Now, this is something that you could easily put together. Maybe not easily, but yeah, like that looks like that could be a real event space. I, just like with LEDs and paper mache, you can make that a reality. Yeah, it would be expensive, <laughs> but, but it would be doable. Not for $8 in <laughs> yeah. a couple of hours. <laughs> there, There is a skill that is event planning, and these people do not have it. They didn't even cover up the windows. Like, yeah, they didn't even try. Like, there's no environmental lighting. There's no... Other than just, just some party city decorations and some jelly beans. They should have leaned, in, leaned into the fact that it was an abandoned warehouse. That would have been a lot more fun. Now, can you just use the Willy Wonka name? I think that... Is the, it in public domain now? The book. Oh, it could be, yeah. Yeah, but not... It'd be Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, though, not Willy Wonka. Yeah. But he, that was his name in the book, right? Yeah, but there's the movies are Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. But as long as the name was in the book, I think, probably. Maybe, yeah. Uh, I guess it is Willy Wonka experience, so... But this harkens back to the uh, Tumblr dash con disaster. Yeah. This is, I think, this is worse. <laughs> yeah, this is way worse because it's aimed at children. Well, it was popular. Yeah. Like a lot of people showed up. If there was only like three kids that showed up, this wouldn't have been news. This is. Uh, remember, we also had the fire festival. Yeah. yeah. So this is a new thing. Like just hype it up and use PR and social media, and then offer nothing. I I took me and my mom took a couple of my younger cousins to like a big dinosaur event in Lexington a few years ago and like they even like it's just animatronic dinosaurs and then you walk through and look at them but like they had like lighting set up and like sound and like little signboards so you could read about all the different dinosaurs like there was some effort put into it so it didn't just look like a warehouse this is this is nothing amazing that's it though that's all we've got for the week consider that as you go through your weekend (laughs) Your life might be bad, but it's not dollar store Oompa Loompa. <laughs> no disrespect to the dollar store, store Oompa Loompas. Loompas. <laughs>